So I welcome all of you to Reinforcement Learning channel and this is the second lecture in Reinforcement Learning. So this lecture is very important as this lecture forms the basis of Reinforcement Learning and we will discuss the two most important aspects of Reinforcement Learning that is a state value function action value function and few discussion about the Markov decision process and Markov states. So these are the topics for this lecture. State value function, action value function, Markov property and Markov states. So let's get into reinforcement learning. The first thing is an agent. An agent is a learner and a decision maker in a reinforcer learning task. An environment is something that tells the agent about the states and provide the rewards to the agent. Uh, in, and in response, agent takes some actions and again it is uh, provided with some new reward and find itself in a new state. So these two continuously interact with each other resulting in a reward and a new state. So states are the basis for decision making. Every time the agent wants to make a decision, it will find itself in a particular state and will try to maximize the reward for the possible next state. That is agent will make a transition to the state uh, for which it is getting the maximum reward or we can say um, in an MDP the expected return the agent will maximize the expected return so let us revise this process of decision making in a, in a time step that is uh, the time step denotes the particular instant of decision making everything is in reinforcement learning is reference with the step of decision making that is this time step presenting a step of decision making so Anytime the agent wants to make a decision, it will find itself in a particular state and this information about the state is provided to the agent by the environment. Now actions. Suppose at time t, agent finds itself in a state st. We are denoting uh, the state at time t with st. Where by time I mean a particular instant of decision making. So agent finds itself in a state st. That is, it means that at step t, environment's state is st and agent receives this information as an input. So on the basis of this state and on the basis of the reward that agent received for the previous action, it will take a particular action in this state. Now this particular action is governed by the policy which we want an agent to learn. So we will tackle all these issues uh, in the upcoming slides. So at this stage, agent will select an action and makes a transition to next state and will get a reward. As we already discussed, there is a continuous interaction process. Agent finds itself in a particular state and reward from the previous action. This forms the input for the agent. On the basis of this input, agent will select a particular action in a state on the basis of this state. So this A of ST denotes a set of all possible actions in a state ST. At this stage, agent will select an action and make transition to next state. So agent's goal is to maximize the reward in a long term. That is the expected reward or the return. The expected return we can say. So at a particular time step t, agent will take an act. Agent will take an action at depending on the depending on the current state st and a reward from the previous action at minus one. And in this state, it will take an action AT and will receive a new reward which will be denoted by RT plus 1 and will find itself in a new state ST plus 1. So, at a particular state ST and a reward from the previous action that is AT minus 1 when, uh, when the agent was in state ST minus 1, it took some action AT minus 1. On the basis of that action, agent received some reward RT and finds itself in new state st 
And now this strrt will form the input for the agent and will help him to take the decision 80 and will receive a new reward rt plus 1 and will find itself in a new state st plus 1. So this whole process can be summarized in the following way. At time step t, agent state is st and the associated reward that is rt from the previous action at minus 1 forms the input for the agent. So this can be represented in this form. This agent's state is st, particular state and the reward it is getting that is rt the reward it is getting for taking the action at minus 1 and now this will form the input for the agent and on the basis of this input agent will select a particular action so on the basis of this information agent selects an action at this is the process this is state st and reward rt these form the input for the agent and on the basis of this input agent selects a particular action on the set of all possible actions that are possible in state st and now agent will find itself in a new state st plus 1 and will get a reward rt plus 1 so this is the overall process at a particular step of decision making that is noted by symbol t agent finds itself in a state st and a reward due to action at minus 1 that is we denote by rt this will form the input for the agent. On the basis of this input, agent will select a particular action AT and due to this action, agent will make a transition to your next state as T plus 1 and will get a reward RT plus 1. Now again, this will form the input in, in the step T plus 1 of decision making and agent will again select an action a t plus 1 and find itself in a new state as t plus 2 and a reward rt plus 2. So this process goes on continuously and this process is known as the agent environment interaction process. So as I mentioned this process goes on continuously and after each action agent makes transition to a new state and receives a reward for the action selected in the previous state. That is already we already covered this issue so here comes a policy so a policy is a probability of taking action A in a state as at a particular instant of decision making that we denote by symbol T this pi T s comma A is this means that in a part, at a particular state S T the probability that agent will select an action A T which we denote by A Okay, so in a state S, the probability of selecting action A is denoted by the symbol pi t, where t is any step of decision making. Everything is referenced with a step of decision making. So as you already mentioned, agent's policy is to maximize the reward over a long run. So now we are having two uh, kind of task. One is episodic task and uh, one is uh, known as continual task. So in episodic task, first we discuss a case of undiscounted return. So, so in the case of undiscounted return, we just sum up all the rewards that is uh, in particular state ST. In a particular state ST, we are getting this, uh, we are taking action AT. On the basis of this, we are getting this reward RT plus one. And likewise, we will sum all those rewards that we can get at instant t plus 1 then t plus 2 then t plus 3 and up to t where, where this t denotes a, uh, denotes a final step or we can say the terminal step of an episodic task so the whole process of decision making is segmented into episodes and now we are concerned only with the episodes so the agent's aim is to maximize his return maximize the return of this episode so this is the case of undiscounted return and it is useful where there is a terminal state otherwise this sum may go to infinity. Uh, so this is useful in the cases where there is a terminal state that is when we deal with episodic tasks but in uh, in general in episodic tasks also we 